Well, this is not a spring chick, and this is our vlog for the end of the crowdfunding campaign with Indiegogo. You go, what? <laughs> it's like, okay, so part of it is, is it has been, we did a campaign for 10 days for Cooking with Not a Spring Chick, and there's a lot of things that we learned. Um, number one, is crowdfunding a bad word? It is a horrible word. We're finding it out. I didn't realize that it was, right? The other thing is, there's another organization which is Kickstarter, which is also crowdfunding, but people don't think of... They don't say crowdfunding. They don't say crowdfunding, they just say Kickstarter that people have used. But it's the same. So anyway, um, my, it doesn't seem to have the same connotation, which is really kind of unusual. So we've learned a lot because number one is... Um, crowdfunding is not an infinite universe. Yes. We had gone to... Well, actually, we can tell you one of the things that we learned. This was actually from a crowdfunding panel. Yep. Okay. Of course, we went to it at the end, and one of the things that they said, that infinite universe, was that if you go back to the well, because they had people that had case studies, they said, if you go back to the same well, the people have already seen what you've done. And there's, first of all, they only have so much money. Yeah. <laughs> Second of all... They probably don't want you asking for money all the time. They want you to do other things. <laughs> but the secret to crowdfunding is you have to continually go back to the people you're doing it with. Mm -hmm. And basically it's also considered to be the worst part of crowdfunding. Yeah. I kind of think of it as selling Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. Although you don't get the cookies. You're going, <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, because remember it's like when you were younger, the Girl Scout cookies, it's like usually your family bought them all. And all your relatives, and then some of you, oh yeah, and then your parents took them to work. <laughs> yeah. Right? And then occasionally you might see some at a supermarket when you went. But part of it is you basically begged everybody that you knew to do the crowdfunding, oh, not the crowdfunding, to buy the Girl Scout cookies. Oh, right? Was that a Freudian slip? Yeah. They did the crowdfunding. They did say that about 30% of the, the money comes from family and yeah. friends. Well, part of it is, is... If they don't have any money, you're screwed. Yeah. Or if they think you have money... You're screwed. <laughs> okay. Or you never know what the situation is. Well, the um, situation can also be... You're using social media, which is basically the same people that are using social media that are in the same industry you are, are all trying to raise money the same way. And once again, there's not an infinite amount of money that people right. have in social media and on your site. And when we say that, my social media group has a lot of my friends from the entertainment industry. And a lot of them are working on projects and they're all looking for jobs and looking for money. Oh, voila, right? You can learn from them, but part of it is, is don't expect them to be donating anything. Um, but it does help that... You know, we, we could lean on a few friends and ask them for favors, which they sent it out to their groups, which was always really appreciated. Because then their followers, it, it totally expands their reach. Um, we also did hear from the panel that some people did, what did they do? Oh, yeah, they did, let's see, press releases, which we could do. The press releases, we actually did do a press release, it worked, it didn't, um we did a story on crowdfunding. And we did a story on crowdfunding, and we've been doing vlogs on crowdfunding. But the problem comes is the word itself is a horrible word to use. As we, we really did find out. They do not want to hear that word. And one of the things that we also found out is that to be successful, you have to, well, we would say spam, and you're going, ooh, spam? Well, part of it with social media is if that's one of the avenues you're using, is a lot of people don't go down. So it's kind of like what pops up when they're doing it. Mm. Which means that they aren't on there very often, so you need to be sending so, it out. So what I, I, I put out on my it. thing, what they said about social media, social media only works <laughs> if you're looking for what's mm -hmm. on the media. If you're not, you're never going to find it. One of my friends says, every time you talk about it, you need to include a link to your campaign. Yep. Ah. Okay, something else we learned about. Oh, what was the other major thing? It's just oh. We did lose 90% of the audience on our website. That kind of, first of all, that was not what we were expecting at all. No. We, okay. we, we, now, we, by the time we ended up over a, the 10 day span, the total audience loss was 46.6% of our audience. Which is atrocious. 
And that kind of dampened our enthusiasm, let's put it that way. Now granted, we put, we put it on sites, and one of ours is a new site, so during, on that site we talked about the campaign, we did, well actually we talked about the campaign in some areas, we actually talked about the campaign itself. There's because a difference. One of them is no, named, the other is not. The trick is that we're, we're, also new. We are, we're walking a tightrope where you can't actually mention what you're doing on the news site. Mm -hmm. You can tell people about all the things we're doing wrong and how we're doing it, but you can't mention the campaign, which puts us in the doghouse to start off with well, on a campaign. Because part of it is you have a conflict of interest. Now, somebody else, like when some of the, on the panel, some people were talking about, you know what really helped my campaign is I got interviewed about my campaign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a big deal. Um, but or, we're the interviewers. There's the problem. Yeah, and so typically, the, yes, you have friends that do interviews, but they don't want to interview you about your kid, you know? So there's part of the, the challenge. But we can approach it a different way. So we're fortunate that we have that avenue. Some of them, like the one we did for the Indiegogo, it was flexibility funding, which is if you don't... Um, you get what you get. You get Whatever what you, they donate, you get. Right. Some of them, you don't get anything unless it's totally funded. Yeah. So there's two things that happens in that situation. One is, if you don't get anything until it gets funded, some people get a little bit desperate. I remember on the panel, he said, well, about halfway through, I started getting really desperate because if I didn't, I, you know, they, they'd already raised so much money, but unless they reached more, yeah. you get nothing. That's right. So, so I'm just kind of curious. In that situation, do people have a tendency more to donate, thinking that They're they looking, might not donate, have to donate if you don't reach your goal? Yeah, which tends one to believe that somebody is pumping their own money into a campaign in order to reach the goal, mm -hmm. which basically only then cost them the amount of money. This isn't a new site. I'm, I will assume, since I, but I don't know, that if they're like a thousand dollars short and they want the whole thing, they put a thousand dollars into it. Knowing that that thousand dollars is only going to cost them like six mm -hmm. or seven percent of that thousand, which is was it sixty or seventy dollars mm -hmm. in reality, but they can pledge a thousand and only have to come up with a thing because it's their money. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the things we learned in the panel was that when you're doing that campaign, do not give them something. That will take a lot of time from you. <laughs> we found out, you know, we've got to be honest, we were at the Avengers press preview and the people behind us in, in the line to pay for their parking were talking about the disaster the guy had on his hand. He said he's spending more time fulfilling the things on his campaign than he had, than it was worth. And so they're talking about, well, first of you know, have somebody else actually run the campaign and somebody else do the DVDs for you and you concentrate on what you're doing. But he didn't know that and by that time you really sunk, which we did find out from him and then we found out from the next panel. Don't give anything else that's going to cost you money to turn out. Well, and part of it is the time. I've, I've, I've looked at some of them where it's like there's a photographer and they're going to give you postcards. Okay, so if you're thinking of it from a, a customer standpoint, you're like, oh, it only cost me $2 for a postcard. Great, right? And you get postcards from all over the country. Well, that's kind of cool. Maybe that's why people are doing it. But then from the other person's standpoint, they're sending the postcard out from all these places. So guess what that means? Uh-huh. Guess what that means? They have to physically send out a postcard, which takes time. I personally think I would have had a high-def download of a photo. Well, we've come to that conclusion that high-def downloads are a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a whole lot easier and... Um, you don't, you don't, it doesn't take all of that extra time. So part of it is, is well, crowdfunding, it's up, it's down, it's all around. Um, some people have said that they were able to gain an audience through crowdfunding. Yeah. Most of the people that we listened to on the panel that were successful already had an audience. They were already successful at what they were doing. These were people that were not failures before, and they hit, and it, it, okay, they had large social media, the larger the social media audience that you have, the larger fan base you have, the easier it is to bring in funds. That's right. But that goes with everything, right? Yeah. Because, well, if you already had that base already, did you really do that campaign? Yeah. So, anyway, there's a lot of things that can make it easier. But one thing that I did realize is prepare, prepare. Once you start your campaign, be ready to tell everybody about it. And of course, 
you know, can I say we're one for punishment? No, 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 we're not. But part of it is we're reporting on different things that we're experiencing. So we're getting ready to launch another campaign, and we'll compare one versus another. We will also different. write about the campaign, too. We're gonna, we'll have a written documentation of, of the uh, first voyage of the Titanic very shortly, mm -hmm. and the second voyage of the Titanic, which is supposed to be a successful run, from Gloucester to New York, she'll be started with. We're gonna have to put a map up, right? Yeah. So. so we're really, really excited. So anyway, um, crowdfunding is it for you? Yes or no? Sometimes it might take a little bit of research, but you know, you never know. It could really work. Or not. Join us for the Titanic. Oh, this is not a spring chicken. <laughs>